Ukraine's counter-offensive attempt has failed. Germany wants EU to cancel national vetoes. White House will hold first hunger conference in decades. Kiev's troops suffer great losses in a failed attack ordered by President Zelensky towards Kherson, Moscow says. Ukraine's much-heralded, counter-offensive, in Kherson has, failed miserably, the Russian Defense Ministry insisted on Monday, listing estimated losses suffered by Kiev during the operation. Ukrainian forces had attempted to attack in three directions on orders of President Vladimir Zelensky but made no gains, Moscow explained. Russian troops caused great losses to the Ukrainian attackers during the day's battles, a statement read. Kiev saw 26 tanks, 23 armored fighting vehicles, 9 more armored vehicles, and two Su-25 ground attack jets destroyed, while more than 560 troops were lost, according to the summary. Earlier in the day, the Ukrainian outlet Suspiln quoted Southern Command spokesperson Natalia Humanik as saying that, offensive actions in various directions, had begun, including in the Kherson region. She offered no details, however, saying only that any military operation needs silence. By Monday evening, however, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine mentioned only a Russian attack near the village of Potemkino. Kiev has been talking about a Kherson counteroffensive all summer, while soliciting more weapons and ammunition from its western backers. In a video address to the people on Sunday, Zelensky vowed that Ukraine will return to Donbas, as well as Kharkov, Zaporozhye, Kherson and definitely to Crimea. Meanwhile in Germany, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Monday called on EU members to abandon the right to veto in favor of majority voting in a number of key areas. Such a move could facilitate the bloc's future expansion. Speaking at the Charles University in Prague, Scholz argued that changing voting practices may help to grow the EU, given that currently any bloc member can veto the accession of a candidate country. He also suggested introducing majority voting on a number of pressing matters, including sanctions and human rights. Where unanimity is required today, the risk of an individual country using its veto and preventing all the others from forging ahead increases with each additional member state, the German Chancellor said. According to Scholz, the principle of unanimity only works for as long as the pressure to act is low, citing the example of Russia's military offensive in Ukraine, which has challenged the way the EU approaches policymaking. The German leader also wants the EU to switch to majority voting in areas such as taxation and foreign policy, adding that he knows full well that this would also have repercussions for Germany. Scholz noted that Berlin supports enlargement of the EU, adding that he believes that the Western Balkan countries, as well as Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia would eventually join the bloc and that this will inevitably bring more differences among members. As it currently stands, any of the 27 EU members can override a decision supported by the other countries. This gives small states significant leverage on the bloc's policies, which can at times paralyze decision-making. In the US, the White House has announced when it plans to hold the first hunger, nutrition and health conference in over 50 years as the US continues to deal with rampant inflation, which is affecting food prices throughout the country. Set to be held on September 28 in Washington, D.C., the conference will supposedly bring together government leaders, academics, activists and Americans from all walks of life, to focus on issues affecting millions of citizens who are faced with food insecurity amid surging prices. We will announce a national strategy at the conference that identifies actions the government will take to catalyze the public and private sectors to drive transformative change and address the intersections between food, hunger, nutrition, and health, a statement by White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre reads. President Biden's administration says it aims to improve food access and affordability, empower people to make healthy food choices and enhance food security research in areas experiencing destitution. Washington has claimed it plans to eradicate hunger in the U.S. completely by 2030. I'll be convening the White House conference with hunger, nutrition, and health to bring together anti-hunger and nutrition advocates, food companies, local state governments, tribal and territory committees to lay out our plan to combat hunger and improve nutrition for every American, Biden said in a video statement back in May. The meeting will come as inflation has put a noticeable strain on the food budgets of many American families. Grocery store prices have gone up some 12.2% since last year, according to the Consumer Price Index. Inflation has reached a 40-year high under the Biden administration, hitting 9.1% in June and currently sitting at 8.5%. With prices of food, fuel, and consumer goods rising, the Biden administration has continued to spend lavishly, with the president allocating more than $54 billion since February for military and economic aid to Ukraine and passing a $739 billion climate, 
Healthcare, and Tax Reform Bill earlier this month. While the bill is named the Inflation Reduction Act, the Congressional Budget Office has noted that it will saddle middle-class Americans with around $20 billion in additional taxes over the coming decade, while having a negligible impact on inflation. This channel is dedicated to providing you with news, global events, and analysis. In an unbiased, easy-to-understand manner, excellent for getting quick updates and insights, and for educational purposes. If you get some value out of this video, please consider helping us. Give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content is released.